Salatu salam ala Rasulillah. So these durus uh, are going to be really fun because they're going to be a little more advanced than. Uh, and again, when I say advanced, understand I mean advanced in the context of the United States and the West. In other countries, this would be like. Simply. So, in the end of each bab, I'm going to put a test. So, you should be ready to test. Now, the point of the test, you're not going to get a degree out of this, but it's for you to learn in reality, right? I mean, even if you got, like some brothers, like, I studied this matan and I studied this and I memorized this, but then when you ask them, like, okay, yani, what's the difference between tuhur and tahir, and they don't know, then what's the point of everything they've, they've studied? Some people, they're like, oh, look at this degree that I have, and this uh, uh, sheikh is this, and he memorized this. But when you get down to it, they don't know. So I want you guys to be taking notes, or if you're memorizing, then memorizing, and revising those notes, watching the videos again. That's one of the benefits of having the videos, and rewriting your notes. And if you got questions, those that are watching live, Post questions, inshallah, one of the brothers is going to be looking at the questions so we can answer them at the end of the session. And if you think of it later, post them on the YouTube. I've been replying all of the answers that I can get, inshallah. So that's one thing. Second thing, uh, some of the manuscripts are a little bit different. This is sometimes when brothers, when we're reading the matan and they have something. Yes, there are some slight differences, like a, you know, some may have a word here and there, and that's a difference of manuscripts. That's why getting a good tahqiq is important. But even if your manuscript's a little different, it's not a big deal. It's always with the same meanings. Stay um, what is the manhaj in this dars? Again, I want to make sure you guys understand. Um, we are all about adilla, and we're going to give proofs and proofs and proofs. I didn't want to be repetitive, otherwise I was going to bring a lot of proofs even for the same uh, mas'ala. But for everything, we're going to bring proofs. Why? Because my understanding, and Allahu Alam, uh, yani, is Islam is haq and everything in Islam is clear. If it's unclear from the masail, yani, it's only because of a lack of knowledge on our side. Everything in Islam is clear. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi he left this ummah where its night is like its day. I and mean, what does that mean from the hadith? What does it mean? It means everything is clear. The halal is clear, the haram is clear. That which is bainahuma, uh, we'll talk about those things, uh, are well known to the ulema to stay away from and things like this. So, so some people, they go, well, you know, this madhab has an opinion and this is another opinion. Wallahu alam, and they move forward. Well, what's the point of that dars? And you need to know what is right to be able to practice it. And some of you are like, well, some ulema say this, and they just go forward. What, what, what benefit was that? So we're going to give adilla, proofs. Even though we're studying through a book of Hanbali fiqh, I mean, I don't want to, there is no masking that, right? Because this is a methodology of the imma al-arba'a, and following is a, a, a development of a student from the time of the salaf. I and mean, these imma were from the salaf, till our time. And there is a benefit in that. But loyalty has to be to Quran and Sunnah. Has to be to the proofs. So everything we're going to mention, what is the madhab, but we're also going to mention what are the adilla, what are the proofs. And if the adilla are not what the author of the book here has, then we follow the adilla. We don't, even though we praise the ulema and we respect the ulema, but we don't consider them anbiya. Only the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the one, everything he said has to be accepted. After that, every alim makes a mistake in something, then they write in something else. And may Allah reward the alim even in his mistake because they try their best. Tayyib. Kitab al-Tahara. Kitab huwa masdar kataba. Tayyib. Where does it come from? Kitaban. Tayyib. This is a masdar. Kataba. Arabi. Everything comes from a three letter or, or rub'ai or four letter or sometimes more. Uh, but usually, yani, from a three-letter root. What is the asal of kitab? Anybody know? Katba. What's katba? Jama'a. Kitab, which we take to mean what? Book, right? Asal of it, it comes from the meaning of jama'a, of collecting. 
the Arab, when they would say kataba, they would originally not mean write. Because the Arab, they didn't write much in the past. It was to collect your thoughts on a subject. And that's what's called kitab tahara. They would have tahara. Tahara, what does it mean? We mentioned this in the end of the last dars. Linguistically, what does it mean? Huh? You're not deaf. To clean. Tayyib. In the Sharia, it has two meanings. One is tahara, ma'nawiya, and one is tahara, hissiya. Tayyib. What is tahara, ma'nawiya? He a tahara, min a shirk, wa bid'a, wa dhunub, wa ma'asi. Yani, it is to cleanse from bid'a or shirk or sins or bad qualities, all those things. Tell you, we said this, what is the dalil for this? Awalan, qawla subhanahu wa ta'ala al-mushrikeen. Faqala subhanahu wa ta'ala, innama al-mushrikeen najis. Najasa, najasun. What does it mean, najis? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, innama al-mushrikeen najasun. Verily, the mushrikeen are najis. Tayyib, does that mean that every mushrik is a walking around physical piece of najasa? No. I think somebody could take a nice shower, they could be clean. No physical najasa. But that is a spiritual najasa. Tayyib, you understand or no? Tayyib. The qawla subhanahu wa ta'ala fatiyabaka fatahir as Ibn al-Qayyim has mentioned that the jumhur of the salaf of this ummah in the tafsir of this ayah also took it to not mean cleaning the clothes, although that can be a meaning as well, but it came to cleaning the uh, people who like to be clean, Tayyip, who try to clean. But what does that mean? They weren't trying to banish Lut because Lut was taking a lot of showers or making Lut and his people out because they were clean and cleansing from sins. Tayyip, everybody getting the adillah? Because I, I hear a lot of the rules, you know, there is Tahara Ma'nawiya and Tahara Shari'i, the Hissiyya and this, but they don't give adillah. So then how do you, don't just accept somebody saying because it's somebody saying. You have to know the proofs. This is why we call this the advanced dars. Tayyip. Tahara Hissiyya. What does that mean? His actually means the senses, right? So this is mean, I mean when you actually use physical means. Here, isti'mal mutahhir li raf al hadith aw izal al najasa. Tayyib. Ida nakul ijal, izal aw zawal. Fiya farak. Inshallah, takalam. Well, different between izal and Zawal, we'll talk about it inshallah. But something that is a purifier. Tayyib, what is a purifier? Water. Is water the only purifier? We got khilaf. Tuhur fiha al asal. And there is the original, which is water. And then there is fi in, in its meaning, which is tayam. It's also used because tahara physically is raf al hadath, is to lift the state of hadath or zawal or izal. And izalatul najasa and zawalatul najasa, we'll talk about the difference of something that is filthy. Physical filth, taking away, cleaning, removing. Now, now look at the wording. You have to understand Arabic is a very deep language. When we talked about hadith, what is hadith? What is hadith? Hmm? No. What is hadith? A state of impurity. What is najasa? Filth. Something unclean, something that's dirty. In the Shari tense. Now, something you may find something to be disgusting to you, like snot, but it's not it's not najis. Right? So 
you have to know what is najasa shari'i, yani in the sharia. Tayyib, so, so tahara in its spiritual or in its meaning sense is something you can't really touch. When you become a Muslim, when you accept tawheed, you are no longer spiritually najis, even though you may not have taken a shower yet or so on and so on. That's a spiritual cleansing. Tayyib, if you make tawbah, Nobody can see you made tawbah. There is no physical change in you other than what's in your heart, right? Tayyib. But when you talk about a physical tahara, there are two things we're dealing with. One is to remove physical najasa. Like let's say you get something najis on your thawb, on your clothing, or your badan, on yourself, or makan, on a place, for example, where you want to make salah. Like the hadith about the Arabi that urinated in the masjid, right? So that's physical najasa. Taking that away, it's called izalat, izal, izal, and zawal. We'll talk about the difference, inshallah. Okay, these, are the, these are the minute things people miss. The other thing is, the other aspect is raf'a, to lift. Now, notice, we didn't say remove, we said lift. Raf'a, hadath. Because hadath, let's say one of you has wudu or doesn't have wudu. Can I physically remove that state from you? No. If you have, if one of you walks in and you have, I don't know why you would have that, but uh, some, some urine on your body, like your thobe, some you were walking by, some bum peed on you, right? Now that you can physically remove. You can take it, you take it, you wash it, right? Disinfect it, <laughs> right? So you physically, but hadath is a state of being, right? Now, that's why it's called lifting. What is the dalil for that? Now, if you want to look at izalatul najasa, we look at the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tuhur inay ahadakum, from Sahih Muslim, tuhur, the cleansing of your dish, in, if a, a dog licks in it, is seven times, in uh, uh, Sahih Muslim, it's also in a Tirmidhi, in Abu Dawud, and Ahmad, a very well known hadith. So this shows us that this is a part of tuhur, like this is a part of using something to clean, the action of cleaning. This is, the, this is a dalil for why tahara has the aspect of that. Tayyib, if we look at the ayah from Surah Al-Ma'idah regarding wudu, or if you look at uh, where Allah says, in kuntum junaban, fatatahharu, yani, if you are in a state of janaba, cleanse in Surah Al-Ma'idah as well, same ayah. What does that tell you? That if you are in a state of janaba, or yani, if you want to make wudu, these are a pure parts of purification and that is raf'ul hadath tayyib hadath there are two types tayyib what are the two types tayyib hadath al akbar wa hadath al azghar what is hadath al akbar that which requires ghusl tayyib i'll give you some examples although this is not we're not actually at that at that point yet in the book, but just to benefit. For example, uh, if somebody has what's called a wet dream, right? If somebody has spousal relations, yani, they're junub, start of janaba, bad al hayd, bas, yani. Uh, so, well, these are the obligatory ones, right? Then there is death, yani, even though the ghusl for the dead is not raf al hadith. It's mafi ma'inahu. We'll get into that. Right? There are other types of ghusl that are mustahab, like for Jum'ah and Eid and so on, that are not for raf al hadath. Sayyib? Then there is hadath al azghar. Hadath al azghar. What's hadath al azghar? When you need to make wudu. So, what is the tahara for hadath al akbar? Ghusl. What is the tahara for hadath al azghar? Wudu, or what's for what's in its place, which is tamum, tayyib. فبدأ المؤلف في المتن. يعني then we begin the actual متن. 
He says, Kitab al-Tahara. Wahiya. What's this Damir pointing to? Here? Tahara. Right? The Tahara. Wahiya. Irtifa' al-Hadath. Wa ma fi ma'inahu. Wa zawal al-Khabath. Tayyib, he said, What is Tahara? Irtifa' lifting al-hadath wa ma fi ma'nahu and that which comes under its meaning that's an interesting statement wa zawal al-khabath tayyib why zawal laysa min zal yani min min zal zawal min zal laysa min izal limada Zawal and Izal. There is a farak. Izal al Khabath, we use it all the time. But here, the Mu'allif, and this is why these books, these Mutun, were written so amazingly because in one little line, he has given you so much benefit. But if only if you understand it. People always ask me, brother, uh, what's a good translation of this matan I should get? You shouldn't. Translating Nukhbat al-Fikr or translating Zad al even though it's been done, it may be a benefit for somebody who's teaching to kind of like, oh, what's a good word for this, whatever. But for Tullab Ilm, it's useless because how will you understand what does it mean? If, you just, if it just says pure water, well, what does it mean, pure water? Right? If it says a, a massly transmitted hadith, mutawatir, right? what does that mean? If you don't know what it really means, then just getting an English word for an Arabic istalah and word doesn't really help a student, except to think you know what you don't know. This is zawal al khabath. Zawal is without necessity of intention. Zala. Izal is when you intend and you do something with intention. Some types of najasa may require a certain type of cleansing. For example, if a pig licks something or a dog licks something, and we'll talk about the types of najasat and things. But the essence about najasa is it does not require intention to take away. For example, let's say you got some filth on you, right? And you, have, you don't even know. All right? You jump in some water, you're swimming through a lake, uh, Lake Arrowhead, right? You, you get out of the lake, you've, you've been in there, don't jump in, jump out, you're, you're playing, whatever. And then somebody tells you, brother, you know, when you were coming, I saw some najasa on you. And you look, and your thobe is clean now. I mean, you, you've been in, jumping in and out of lakes, it's clean, it's gone. Right? Do you need to rewash that? Yes or no? No or yes? You do? Why? But it's already off. It's gone. If it's gone, you don't need to. Somebody could say, oh, but you didn't have intention. Right? But you don't need intention to remove najasa. The essence is to remove it. Tell you about another case scenario. You go up to Lake Arrowhead, same lake, and you don't have wudu. You have no knee of wudu right now, but you go jump in, your hands get wet, your face, your head, you're, you're swimming, you're going in and out of water, you're jumping in and out, you're, you're, you're cannonballing or whatever, and then you come out and they're like, hey, let's make salah. And you're like, well, I didn't have wudu, but everything for wudu just got washed. Can I make salah? No, you cannot. That's correct. Why? A knee. Huh? Why? Why do you need niyyah for wudu and not need it for zawal al khabat? Because wudu is a ibadah in itself. Salah is a ibadah in itself. If you have wudu and the next salah time comes in, can you make an extra wudu just for extra reward? Why are you making wudu? You already have wudu. It's ibadah. When the water drips off your body, does it take away sins? Will those parts of your body be shining on the day of judgment? So wudu is an ibadah. Even though, according to the Hanafi madhab, you don't need niya for wudu. Which, okay, interesting. Right? You do for ghusl. Which is, right? But, 
adilla show that you require niyyah for every type of ibadah and wudu is an ibadah because it has reward in itself it's not just for salah if you have wudu and you go to make salah and you refresh your wudu you get reward why would you get that if you only needed it to make salah why would you make wudu to go to sleep then yani you're not making salah you're going to sleep right why is there a reward for going to sleep having made wudu with a malik making dua for you right so this is an ibadah this is why irtifa al hadath ghusl you need niyyah as well ghusl and wudu you need niyyah but zawal al khabar tayyib wa ma fi ma'nahu what does that mean yani irtifa al hadath i got it you make wudu and you make ghusl if you need hadath al akbar everybody clear on that right asghar akbar on that tayyib what does it mean and that which is has its meaning upon its meaning tayyib tayammum any other examples tayammum are you making raf al hadath no right but you are using something in its place why because if you see water can you now let's say you made tayammum you had no water you were in bakersfield and you were going east i don't know toward nevada or whatever car broke down no gas station no water time for salah you made tayammum you made salah tayyib alhamdulillah your car is fixed you get to i don't know las vegas for dawa not right you get there now there's water but you made tayammum you haven't invalidated your wudu now right your tayammum can you make salah no because now that water is there tayammum is finished so what does that tell you tayammum doesn't actually raf al hadath but it is ma'af al ma'nahu and it still comes under that basic principle of it that it allows you for that time and that's why tahara covers tayammum even though it's not done with water tayyib another example ghusl al yadain lil qa'im min al nawm nawm al layl if you wake up from your sleep of night any night sleep deep sleep it is wajib according to the madhhab and according to the clear adilla to wash your hands three times before you put them in a bowl so that washing of three times of your hands is that a part of tahara yes is it raf al hadath no i mean you you don't really have any najasa even what if you wake up your hands are perfectly clean you don't see anything najis but also some said you don't know where your hands have been so you wash them anyway so it's not really considered to be a part of zawal al najasa but it's still a part of tahara tayyib let's get to ghusl mayyit is the dead after that ghusl and wudu that you do for it is he going to make salah maybe i don't know <laughs> i don't know what kind of dead you guys have right get up starts making salah <laughs> no right so why are you giving ghusl yeah it's a part of tahara now it's a responsibility upon us as muslims to make ghusl for the dead is it a responsibility for the dead no I mean if if that nobody makes ghusl for the dead is he going to be accountable? No. So it's not actually raf al hadath. And it's not actually izal al najasa, but it's fi ma'nahu. But still covered under tahara because the dalil for it. Wudu wal ghusl mustahaban. Wudu wal ghusl mustahaban. Yes, say you have wudu and you go to make salah. and you made salah dhuhr time for asr comes in you have wudu you didn't sleep you didn't go to the bathroom none of that and you make an extra wudu are you making raf al hadath no are you doing zawal al khabath no still a part of tahara ma fi ma'nahu tayyib al wudu ba'd al akl al lahm al ibl 
يعني and this is we'll discuss some of the khilaf going into that إن شاء الله تعالى والغسل الثاني والثالث في الوضوء طيب eating camel's meat invalidates your wudu this is raja but is it through the method of something leaving from sabilain no okay but it still you still have to do it طيب also the issue of the second and third washings when you make wudu you are in a state of hadath al azghar you make the first washings that lifts hadath al azghar the second and third are done and it should be done you should do it but this is done for the reward right they are mustahab so this is also not considered raf al hadath because the first washing did raf al hadath but this is also fi ma'nahu tayyib how long have we been going فقال المعلف the مؤلف he continues about زوال الخبث زوال الخبث or نجاسة قسمان الحقيقي والمعفي معناه أيضا زوال الخبث also has two types one is حقيقي actually taking away or erasing or يعني whatever you want to say for it um, removing filth and then it also has what is in its meaning haqiqi will be easy يعني with water بالماء يعني but what is في معناه تيمم can also be used for زوال الخبث and I'll explain that inshallah later in the durus. But also, istijmar. What is istijmar? Istinja is to wash after answering the call of nature with water. That's what a Muslim should do, istinja. But in addition to it, or sometimes in place of it, you can do istijmar. Istijmar in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, as mentioned in Abu Dawud in the Hadith of Anas bin Malik and others, it was to use, use uh, clots of clay or small pebbles to cleanse. They didn't have toilet paper, so they, that would be their dry cleansing. In our time, what would that be? Toilet paper. Okay. So toilet paper, when you clean with toilet paper, this is called istijmar. Okay. So does istijmar really take the najasa away completely? No. But can it be acceptable? Fi ma'nahu? Yes. You can make istijmar. But istinja using water is what really takes the najasa away. And this is alhamdulillah blessing of Islam that we have. At least we know how to clean ourselves after going to the bathroom. Most kuffar, you see them, يعني, they urinate and then they don't even wash or nothing. It's at the urinal, they just zip up and go and shake hands with you. Um, Tayyib. Tuhur. Now we get to the first category of water. Al miyahu talatha. Water is in the sharia of three types, three categories. Tayyib. I'm going to mention all three with their definitions for you to memorize first. Okay? Every one of you has to have memorized this by the next dars. Okay? Otherwise, we don't need people watching. I don't care about how many viewers we get. We don't need people studying. If you're not learning this dars, I'm wasting my time preparing and staying up nights and looking up Adilla and stuff if you're not learning. So you need to memorize these few things. Everything else, if you can memorize, great. If you can't, have notes to go back to. But some things you need to memorize. Three types of water. Tuhur wa tahir fi nafsihi mutahir li ghayrihi. Tuhur is in itself pure and it purifies 
other than it. Okay? It is pure and it cleanses. It can be used for raf'u al-hadath. It can be used for zawal al-khabath. Tahir, huwa tahir fi nafsihi la yutahir ghayrihi. Tahir is in itself pure, but it does not purify other than it. You can drink it, you can make soup out of it, you can cook it, eat it with food, put water with food to cook, but you cannot use it for wudu, fard wudu. You cannot use it for ghusl. You cannot use it for taking away najasa. Right? Those things require tuhur war. We'll talk about najasa, there are some delicate issues there, but najis. No, there is different between najasa and najis. This is kasra taht al jim. And najisun la tahir fi nafsihi wa la yutahir ghayrihi. It is not tahir in itself. It is not acceptable for you to be drinking or eating najasa. And it is not a purifier than other than, for other than it. You cannot use something najis to become pure. I'll give you an example. This is any fun stuff. You're going to enjoy this stuff. There is two parts of water. This will be on a test. All right, so giving you, I'm an easy teacher, so I give you what's going to be on your test. Two parts of water. You paying attention, everybody? Online? Because social distancing, we're not here, but they're online. You made wudu, and you made wudu with one of them. You had two pots or bottles of water. You made wudu, and the water went back into the pot. You didn't, you didn't let it flow out. So one of them is water that you used for making a fard ritual wudu. Tayyip? And there's two pots. You come back to make wudu later. You did hadath, you, you were in a state of hadath al-asghar, you come back. And you forgot which one of the two you made wudu from. What do you do? Hmm? You make two wudu? You make wudu twice. One with each. That is correct. Tayyip. Same scenario except a little different now. You, you have two pots of water. And you see somebody urinating and these are small pots they're not bigger than qullatain and some of that person's urine gets in one of the pots disgusting right some kafir standing up and urinating right you notice it and you're like oh astaghfirullah right then later on you go to make wudu and you see the two pots now one of them urine got into one of them is tuhur tuhur clean tayyib one got a little bit of urine, one clean. What do you do now? Make tayammu. Why? Why not make wudu once with both? Because the last one could be with the najasa, and you cannot make salah with najasa. Tayyib. So you memorize these three, inshallah, categories. The first, tahur. Now, ta has a fatha here. Tahur. If it had a dhamma, tuhur, what would that be? That's the act of cleansing something. Tuhur inaya hadakum, as in Sahih Muslim. The cleansing, the action of cleansing of a dish. Tahur, with the fatha and the ta, this is. The substance used for cleansing. Tayyib. فقال المعلف لا يرفع الحدث ولا يزيل الخبث أو النجس يعني في الرواة in one of the نسخ it has خبث one has النجس الطائرة الطائرة يعني فورا غيره وهو باقي على خلقته طهور 
Tahur is the type of water that nothing can take away the state of Hada. Now, what about Tayammum? We're not discussing Tayammum, we're discussing types of water now. We already mentioned Tayammum under Ma'ana. In types of water, under the three types of water, nothing can be used for wudu, actual wudu or ghusl except for tahur water. So nothing takes away the state of hadath, asghar or akbar, nor can you take away foreign or yani, uh, najasa. Now why did he mention foreign here? Right? Why? When you eat and your body makes your food into whatever, stool, before it exits your body, well it is not, right? but because it's still in you, it is not considered shari'i najasa yet. Right? Once it comes out, it's najasa. Right? So when we talk about this, they're very specific with their wording. Right, to be clear, because some of the people of bid'ah, then they try to play games with these things. Oh, you say you have to do this. Oh, you have urine in you right now. Aha, you can't make salah. Obviously, you can make salah. Right? But this is, this is to be clear. And what is the very simple sifa of tahur water? Is it is still upon its original state as water that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made for us. Tayyib. There is some khilaf ulema about whether there is such a thing as tahir water or not. Some, the majority of the a'imma, including the four a'imma, and many of them, they thought this to be ijma'an on their time period. They took there to be three types of water. Later on, Respectable ulema uh, like Sheikh Islam Taqiyuddin ibn Taymiyyah and Sheikh Abdurrahman Nasir al Sa'adi and Sheikh ibn Uthaymeen and other ayyamah and ulema took that what is rajih is there's only two types of water tahur and najis. And even though we love these ulema and wallahi we respect these ulema and we have a great admiration for these ulema, but we always judge by adilla. What is clear from the adilla, from the proofs? is the original opinion of the Imma Arba and the Madahib Al Arba and, and what the Mu'allif mentions here is correct. And inshallah, I will give plenty of adilla for it. I've spent a lot of time on each one of these issues to make sure that it is in accordance with what the proofs give. But inshallah, we'll get to that. But here, I'm just going to give an example. Why, what does it mean? Baqi ala khilqatihi. If you take, about, if you take water and you put a uh, powder called Kool-Aid, and we're fasting, so, and you put some sugar and some ice and you mix it up, it's called Kool-Aid, it's really cool. Or for you foreign brothers, you take this thing called Ruhabza and you put it in and you mix it up and you get it in milk or water and it's cold. It's nice, it's good, right? Well, it's really just water, right? right? Can you make wudu with Kool-Aid? No. Why not? Huh? Taste has been changed. Tell you. What about seawater? Salty. Can you make wudu with seawater? Yes. So there is a difference, and we'll get into this. When something changes its state naturally, and something has been changed by... Uh, the action of somebody doing something. Okay? But in the essence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمْ تَجِدُوا الْمَاءَ فَلْ فَيَتَيَمَّمُوا What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? If you don't find water, what should you do? Make tayammum. The only thing mentioned here is ma'a, water. In the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there were other types of drinks. Nabil, yani, there is halib mixed with, with milk and laban and what these things they had. They used to mix honey and water and make a, a, a actual a, a intoxicant it's called nabil and so on and so on. 
But Rasulullah Sallallahu he knew these different drinks, Sahaba knew them, but Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala only chose to mention water. No water, what do you do? Make tayammum. So anything that's not under clear, pure, original water, you cannot use. If you go into a restaurant, and no, because that's not water. They bring you lemonade, is that the same thing? No. If you go and ask for lemonade and they bring you just a cup of water, would you be okay with that? No, you're like, bro, I asked for lemonade, right? Not water. So that tells you those are not considered water anymore. When you have changed it, when you have mixed something in it. Now, if you go to the ocean, and there's ocean water or river water or creek water, that's all still water. Right? When you're swimming in the ocean, what are you swimming in? Water. Not lemonade, right? I'll tell you. Inshallah, I'll stop here. We'll continue with Tahur uh, in the next dars, inshallah ta'ala.